Hi ladies, it's Hillary, owner of Free Babes Handmade and blogger at imlifebrave.com, a blog all about living an uncommon life that you love with your family through entrepreneurship. I personally love having one-on-one -on -one coffee dates with other entrepreneurs that I admire, and so I thought it'd be really fun to start a weekly series where I get to interview creative entrepreneurs and you get to listen in. From these interviews, you will learn from their successes and their failures, get behind the scenes access to see how they built their business, and you'll walk away with valuable insights that will help you take your business to the next level. So grab a cup of coffee and join the conversation. Enjoy! Hi guys, it's Hillary with I'm Like Brave, and I am super excited to be here with Lulu today, owner of Lulu Loves. And she makes the cutest um, headbands and bows, and most of them are made out of the beautiful Liberty of London prints. And I'm just super excited to get to hear the behind the scenes and her story. So thanks for being with us, Lulu. Of course. Hi. Hi. So before we get started with all the business questions, tell mm -hmm. us a little bit more about yourself. Okay, so um, I'm originally from Singapore, halfway around the world, oh, cool. and yeah, and I moved here when I was 16 years old with my family, uh, moved to New York City, and um, went to college, um, met my husband at church, um, I interned actually at Barney's New York, which is really fun, I think that started um, my love for the fashion industry, okay. and so um, I you know, was, wasn't working in design or anything like that. I was working for um, the senior VP of special projects. So I was doing a lot of like marketing research and because um, I was a sociology major. So okay. I guess that, yeah. So, um, so yeah, so, but, you know, being in that environment kind of got me thinking, oh, I, I do love fashion and, you know, it'd be great if one day I can do something with that. Uh -huh. And then, so I, my first job ended up being, um, at a company called Raj Manufacturing, which is a swimwear manufacturing company. It's okay. based out in um, Orange County. And um, so I, well, I worked in the sales office in New York City and um, on the wholesale side. So that, I think, also helped to prepare me, you know, for this business that, okay. that, um, that I have now. Yeah. So, um, so my husband and I live, my husband's from Argentina. So we're a very international wow, yeah. family. <laughs> And um, so we live in Brooklyn, New York with our two girls, um, Carolina, who is six, and Gisela, who is three. And, um, and yeah, we love it here. And yeah. So why did you move? Why did your family move here from uh, Singapore? My yeah, so my dad's a pastor, and um, and so originally the plan was for him to come to the U.S. to get another degree, you know, to go back into seminary, get another degree. Mm -hmm. But, you know, so he ended up being a pastor of another church in New Jersey. And, um, but that was the main reason why we all moved here. Like he wasn't going to leave, you know, us behind or yeah. do the long distance thing. So, yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Do you guys go back there a lot? Um, we've only actually before kids. Yeah. A little bit more. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but after Carolina, my older daughter was born, um, we've only been back once. Um, okay. Because it's just, you know, it's like it takes a day to get there and then the jet lag. and But definitely when the girls are a little bit older, yeah. I'll definitely want to, you know, bring them back there and then, yeah, show them around. Cool. Yeah. All right. So tell us, tell me a little bit more about um, what it is that kind of inspired you to be an entrepreneur. Like what things happened in your life that you kind of felt like you could own a business. And also, like, what made you start up Lulu Loves? Um, so what happened was, um, so I was working up till I had Carolina, our older daughter, mm -hmm. and, and always knew that I wanted to be at home with her. Um, and so I quit my job, um, like I think was two weeks before okay. I was due. <laughs> and, um, and so start, stay, stayed home with her. And, um, but when she was around two and a half years old was when I started thinking, Oh, maybe like I had this creative itch that I wanted to do something else, uh -huh. and uh, and she was such a good baby that it really kind of freed up my time, you know, a little bit more, and so so I started thinking, well, what do I like? You know, I have I have a baby girl, and mm -hmm. um, I love accessories. I've always loved working with my you know my hands, and so um, so I figured actually Lulu Love started as a knit knit um, knit accessories business. I started with hand knit scarves and hats, okay, and that's um, how it started. Okay. yeah, that's how it initially started. And then I kind of went into hair knit bows, mm -hmm. and that's when fabric bows and bow ties okay. came into play. Yeah. Yeah. Do you make your knit bows anymore? 
Yeah, I do. Okay. I um not in the summertime, but definitely for fall winter, I'll bring them back. Those are so those are my favorite. I have I know. A couple of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the red one, right? Yeah, you got yeah. The red one? <laughs> That's a good memory. That's cool. Um, yeah. awesome. Okay, so give us kind of a a uh, 40,000 foot view of your business in the first couple years of growth. Like what year did you start and what did it look like growing those first couple years? So I started Lulu Loves in November of 2011. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it was just hand knit accessories at that point. And it really started off as just a hobby. Like the whole handmade um, wave was starting to happen. Mm -hmm. And I just figured, well, I had just picked up knitting about maybe a year ago, and in, and I knitted myself a scarf, and I think, you know, I was thinking, well, this is kind of cute, so I wonder if maybe there are other people out there who would enjoy it too. Uh -huh. And so um, I was just chatting with my husband about it, thinking, hey, you know, there's this website called Etsy, you know, which is kind of new yeah. then too. <laughs> and um and so I said, well, what if I, you know, just knitted like 10 to 15 scarves and if I sold them, then great. If not, then it won't be that much of a loss, you yeah. know, um, financially. And so he was like, yeah, definitely go for it, you know. And so I did. And it sold very quickly. Okay. And um, so I started buying more yarn and started knitting. And my first winter, I think I knitted like a hundred scarves, oh which is insane because, you know, each scarf takes at least an hour and a half. And yeah. I, I, yeah, I wasn't prepared for that, but I was also very pleasantly surprised. Uh -huh. and, um, and so, so that kind of got it, you know, kickstarted the whole Lulu loves, um, this is, yeah. Okay. That's so awesome. Um, so tell us a little bit about um, what your biggest business strength is. So if you were to teach a college course about entrepreneurship, like what would the course title be and give us a little lesson? Um, I would say perseverance um, and, and because I think that and flexibility. So okay. when you first start up the business, or at least when I started my business, I wasn't really sure what it was going to look like. Mm -hmm. And it was more like, here, let's test this out and see how it works. And, um, and then I have this analogy that my husband and I, you know, have thought of, it's like, you know, you have this stoplight, you know, like you, yeah. you stop at every light and if it turns green, then you go, you yeah. know, and if it turns amber, then you kind of slow down, reevaluate, but if it's a red, then okay, let's find another path, you know? Uh -huh. And so I, I think that, but the thing is to keep going is not to just kind of be, um, you know, have a setback and think, oh, I can't do it. And then just kind of, you know, give it up. Totally. It's, I think if, if it's something that you love and you enjoy, um, it's not so much work. It's just, you know, it's, 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 it's a passion. It's a hobby. It's, you know, something that you actually enjoy doing every day. So, um, so definitely perseverance, um, and flexibility, you know, meaning when something doesn't happen, you know, the way that you planned it, well, then think of another way that might work, could work, um, I didn't start off the business thinking um, that I was going to be making hair bows and, mm -hmm. and bow ties, but that um, by far is now um, the main part of the business. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so it's interesting how, you know, the path chooses you, I guess. Totally. <laughs> yeah, that's great advice. Um, yeah. I would take that course. <laughs> um, yeah. And so also I'm interested, we didn't really talk about this beforehand in our pre-interview, but I know you said you do do a lot of wholesale. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice that you can give about wholesale to us? Because I feel like you do have a lot of accounts and you do it very professionally, it seems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so I think the main thing is to have line sheets. And this is something that I learned when I was working at Raj Manufacturing, the swimmer company. Okay. Um, because I think that's that's how retailers see you. You know, you're not going to send a sample product to every retailer that you want to be in. Okay. Maybe just a special, really special ones, uh -huh. you know. Um, but, and also you don't know how many retailers there are out there, you sure. know. So I think it's helpful for when a retailer contacts you and asks you, you know, what are your price points? You know, what are, what are you know, what styles do you have? I think it's just a very... Um, efficient way to kind of have everything together for them and mm -hmm. also I think it presents your business in a more professional way it's not like oh I just slap this together you yeah, know in an email yeah <laughs> yeah okay uh, which I've definitely done in the beginning you know for sure <laughs> but um you learn from that and you and you know so so yeah definitely have line sheets um definitely have like you know who are you you know who am I as a person as a business owner and I think it helps for them to get to know you is you're not just a product that's out there. You uh -huh. know, you're a person and you're a mom and you know, so. Cool. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, and um, do you, do most uh, retailers approach you, or have you ever approached a retailer? I would say it's about 50-50. Um, I started approaching retailers in my neighborhood in Brooklyn um, initially just because I shop at those stores, and I uh -huh. enjoy going to those stores. And um, But it's also about picking the right stores for your product, okay. um, because if... You know, I'm never going to get into a high-end women's, you know, fashion, you know, retail store. It's totally. just not what I do. Uh -huh. uh, but there, because I live in Park Slope in Brooklyn, there are a lot of families here. And so there are a lot of family-friendly um, stores, and so which helps the business. Um, actually, I would bring up the example of Pink Olive. Pink Olive is now one of my biggest accounts. They have three stores here in New York City. And the hair bow accessories started because, you know, I love shopping there. Um, and it kind of came about because I was thinking, well, I think hair bowls, especially in Liberty and London Fabrics, would do really well in the store. And so that's when I sent my line sheets in, and I got to know the owner, Grace, who has been very helpful as I grow, you know, as I'm growing my business. And cool. yeah. yeah, well, and then also, like, I feel like in order to do wholesale, you have to have prices. Oh, nice mug. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I feel like you have to have prices that are, um, you know, high enough to be yeah. able to support wholesale. And I feel like that's sure. another thing I noticed about you and your shop that you do really well is your bows, you know, have a higher price point, which I think <laughs> is great because it shows right. that you really know kind of what you're doing yeah. in the long run. I, yeah. I think the higher price point also comes into play because it's not just, you know, I don't want the business to be just, you know, like a, like a, an Instagram based shop you know I want it to be like a real shop and you know and I can't you know make money if I'm selling bulls for five dollars at retail yes. yeah yeah so I love that because I personally like love when I find other shops that are charging what I feel like they need to charge to have a business and not just a hobby right. because it helps us all when we're all charging correctly exactly. <laughs> otherwise like you have all these people that are undercutting you selling bulls for two dollars and you're gonna say like this is you great, can never compete you yeah can't, you can't sustain yeah. that type of business Exactly. So, exactly. Cool. Okay. Um, but I do, I do like to offer, you know, my followers on Instagram, especially um, like flash sales sometimes, totally, just because yeah. I think it's, you know, it's something fun. It's something I think everyone loves the the, the adrenaline rush that comes <laughs> with like getting your emails in, you know, yeah. um, you're shopping on Instagram. So, um, totally. yeah. Cool. Um, okay. So, so we heard a lot about all the things you do well. So, tell us a little bit about like. The weaknesses that you have or more specifically if you could give us an example of a time in your business where you kind of a weakness came into play and you learned a really big lesson so um, I think time management is, is definitely my biggest um, struggle slash weakness right now okay. I think because you know I have we have two young girls and and I don't have like a big chunk of time during my day where I know I can devote you know mm. just just for the business and so I think, and also because I am more of the, hey, let's figure this out as we go along kind of person with the business, totally. um, when, when things go, do go well, which I'm really thankful for, then it kind of like overwhelms you, you know, uh -huh. where I start having to like order my groceries online or like, <laughs> you know, my poor husband has to help with shipping uh -huh. or, you know, putting the girls to bed every night. Um, and so I think... My, I think the hardest time for us was for was it back in December of 2012. That was like you know the holiday rush orders. Um, I was not expecting my Etsy shop, like with my um, knit accessories, to do even better than the previous year when I first started. And I was not ready for the number of orders that came in. And and it's hard because, like I said, you know it's different with hair bows because they don't take as much time per item, mm -hmm. but with a hand knit scarf especially for you know a grown-up chunky infinity scarf mm -hmm. it, my biggest one takes about three and a half hours oh, wow. so it's just non-stop knitting for three and a half hours you know yeah and and I knit pretty fast because I've knit hundreds of scarves and I think I've had lots of practice uh -huh. but still it takes a long time and so I think that that season was the hardest because I was completely overwhelmed you know felt like a failure because I wasn't present enough for my family you know could barely keep up with the business and was just kind of being stretched in, you know, all these different directions. So I think, um, yeah, that was definitely one of the hardest. Yeah. Okay. Months. What did you learn about? Did you learn anything from it? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. So, um, 
I was kind of like, all right, if it happened twice in a row, I, I would safely assume that, you know, the third, you know, holiday season would kind of be the same. And so I started prepping for, especially for um, hand and accessories in the summertime. I started knitting in the summer. Oh, okay. So I started building up stock. Okay. And, um, and some people have, you know, suggested, well, why don't you just sell what you have already made? That way, you know, you can you can kind of sort of be always be on top. And uh -huh. so I kind of took their advice, but I also kind of like the idea of the customer being able to choose the color and the style that, you know, he or she wants, you know? Uh -huh. And so I think I'm starting to find a balance between the two, you okay. know, of having um, enough stock to kind of get me going for a mm -hmm. little bit. And then also having the flexibility to offer the customer what he or she wants. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's really great. Um, yeah, ready to ship is really awesome, but I know people do like to be able to kind of control what they buy as well. So finding a good balance that works for you, I think, is awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, so what is the coolest thing that's ever happened to Lulu Loves? Well, um, many, many cool things have happened along the way. Um, off the top of my head, I'm trying to think. I, I guess just like seeing your products in the store, in the retail store. Mm -hmm. um, that I actually enjoy going to was definitely one of the highlights, you know, in, in, in my business. Just um, just knowing that other people are in that same store and, and looking at my product and buying them, I think that was just, it kind of blew my mind. I, I think it still still blows my mind a little bit yeah, <laughs> as to why no, people are buying my stuff, but, that's awesome. you know, yeah. Yeah, so how do you, um, sorry, this goes back to wholesale, I'm super interested, yeah. but how yeah. do you, um, do you suggest how they should display your bows, or do you give them the bows on the cards and say, do what you want? They pretty much, because I think each store pretty much has their own way of displaying it, mm -hmm. but I've had a couple of stores ask me, and I, I know some hair bow accessories companies, they actually make their own display, like mm -hmm. either case or, you know, yeah, like I've ribbons. Um, I haven't gone that far yet. Maybe it's something that I'll consider in the future. Mm -hmm. But for now, I just, you know, I just usually suggest like maybe a big glass bowl, you know, at the cash register, because I think um, a lot of people would, when they're paying at checkout, you know, they tend to be like, oh, here's a little, you know, accessory. Yeah. And it's not, it's not that expensive. It's something, it's kind of like an add-on yeah. um, order for them. Cool. You know, okay. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, okay, so if you could get help with anything right now, what is the biggest challenge you're facing with your business? Um, like we talked about in the pre-interview, um, I think um, I definitely have to do something with like my tags and you know just getting the prep work done prior mm -hmm. to, um, for example, like a big wholesale comes in, a big wholesale order comes in. And I get completely overwhelmed by having to, you know, hand punch and hand stamp 300 to 800 tags, you know, at once. Yeah. And which is insane because just that would take, you know, two to three days of straight <laughs> tagging for hours, you know. Totally. And um, so um, I think that's one of the things that I would probably consider farming out, if you will. Uh -huh. um, where, But, you know, I prefer to keep the actual bow making part to myself because at this point the business isn't that big that I can't handle it on my own um I just kind of have to prep for it and I think by you know getting the the tax done I think it would definitely help yeah okay so outsourcing a little bit of this stuff that you don't want to do mm -hmm. totally. I mean I enjoy doing it it's just you know yeah. if push comes to shove that's the first thing that will have to come. totally well I mean I'm sure like there has to be a high schooler out there that would love a little bit extra money yeah you could, exactly. you could pay to come over just like punch after school and then you have a that, ready stock yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. okay um so if you could have lunch with any entrepreneur out there who would it be and why like what would you talk about um I think you know being in Brooklyn there's so many amazing designers here and one of those brands is Ace and Jig oh, um, so yeah. Carrie and Jenna um, I know Carrie lives in my neighborhood so I've actually oh, run into cool. her once uh -huh. <laughs> and um, so I think I would love to just sit down with them because I know they also have a fashion background before they started their own business and so it'll be interesting to kind of hear you know how they got the business because it's huge now there's like it's almost like this cult following you yeah, know totally. and um and they make these beautiful textiles um and so yeah it would be interesting i think to sit down with them and to kind of just you know get to know them and and to hear the thoughts and you know how what do you do when the business grows you know what happens when okay now i'm just babbling. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah totally 
next time you see her, you should totally plan on running into her and arrange yeah. a little coffee date. I know, I know. Probably when I'm wearing one of her clothes. <laughs> yeah, right? Maybe we'll, like, tag her in this video. Be like, please exactly. meet her. <laughs> yeah. Cool. No, that's totally... Um, Yes, I feel like they've done a really, really great job, and especially because their pieces are so expensive. Like, but but they've created such a loyal following, done a great job marketing that people love it. <laughs> totally, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so what would you say are your future plans for your business? Like, what are your goals, and um, what's really exciting for you right now? Um, it's kind of bittersweet thinking about it because. Um, when I think about the future of Lulu Loves, I think about when I have like eight to 10 hours a day to work on it, mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's when my younger daughter Gisela would go off to school and part of me is like, I kind of want her around, you know, yeah, totally. <laughs> but also, you know, practically her being around also kind of is, it kind of impedes the creative process, especially a little bit, um, uh -huh. especially in the beginning of the season when I'm thinking about new designs for the season and you do kind of need that time, you know, to kind of think and process mm -hmm. and kind of marinate your thoughts and your ideas a little bit. Totally. And, um, but also as a mom, I think that part, you know, would never come back, you know, when she's home with me mm -hmm. all day. And so, so yeah, so definitely in about, she's going to be going to school in about a year ish. Yeah. So in 2016, September, she'll be off to school. And I think that's when I would, um, really start to grow the business at a pace that is more manageable. Like right now I'm kind of like, it can grow, but it has to grow very gradually because I'm not sure how much more I can take on at this, at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm not really actively going after stores, especially, um, Definitely, you know, I'm I'm using Instagram to get my name and my brand out there. Um, but other than that, you know, just kind of keeping it more to the retail side at this point. Mm -hmm. And then maybe looking to expand the wholesale business when she's off at school. But, okay. yeah, like I said, it's a bittersweet. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. So you're not in any hurry. Like, you like it. Exactly. Kind of how it's working now and just being able to be really present with your kids. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's the one of the benefits of having your own business is that you can grow it however you want to grow mm -hmm. it, whenever you want to grow it, or pull back, you know, if mm -hmm. it's getting too successful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, just to have more control over it. And because I know my mom and I grew up in Singapore, my mom was always there. She worked in the afternoons as a piano teacher, mm -hmm. but she was there. And I really enjoyed the fact that I could go to her if I needed anything, and mm -hmm. I, I want to do the same for my daughter, so, yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's great. Um, so what parting advice do you have to all of the entrepreneurs out here watching and any of the women who are thinking about starting a business? Um, I would say, you know, just do you. Just do what you love. Just do what inspires you and what makes you smile, what makes you happy, what makes you, you know, yeah, just motivated to tackle the next project or mm -hmm. Um, because I think when, when you have passion for it, that's when, you know, when the difficulties come, you fight through them, you know, you figure out ways to, to learn from them. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so whatever it is that you guys are thinking about, just take that little first step and, you know, put yourself out there. <laughs> cool. No, that sounds like so many people, what they say, just stay true to yourself and do something that's uniquely yours so that you can stand behind it and be passionate about it. Exactly, yeah. Cool. Well, it was really great to hear your story behind your shop. Um, I hope you Thank guys learned you. a ton from Lulu. And also, where can we find you on the internet? So I have an Etsy shop. Um, it's lululoves.etsy.com. And um, sorry. <laughs> Just a uh, I'll be right back. Okay? <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> I know. I know. Let's stay at home, Mom. Um, so, yeah. So you can find me on um, on Etsy at lululoves.etsy.com. And also, um, um, you can follow me on Instagram. Um, it's Lulu Loves B K L Y N, okay. and I do, as I said before, some flash sales, you know, throughout the year, just to kind of keep it fun and interesting. And um, and yeah, and I think eventually I'll love to start my own website and okay. you know, do that. Yeah, do totally. it from there. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, I hope you guys, like I said, learned a ton. And if you can pick one thing from this interview and try to implement it into your business today. And, um, I hope you guys have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Bye.